Almost time for my meeting with Lynn. Huh? Isn't this Neon's highly classified latest and greatest masterpiece? Dancing Dragon Beans? Oh, we can't let this leak. I'd better turn it off right now. Tell me you're the one who was watching Neon's movie. It's okay if you did, but don't leak any of it, all right? She told us specifically to keep it under wraps until its release. Apparently, we're in for an ultra spicy hot pot meal if we go back on our promise. Ahem. <clears throat> Speaking of, it's almost time for our call with Miss Lynn. Doctor? Do you remember our agenda today? Right, I figured. Good thing I put all the material together beforehand. I understand the situation is pretty urgent, so we should get a good grasp of what's happening on the ground in Yuman. Oh, right on time. Here, Doctor, the files. Miss Lin, this is Amiya. Can you hear me? Amiya? Amiya? Miss Lin? Can you hear me? Looks like we have a problem with the signal. Or maybe our equipment. Doctor, let me adjust the equipment to see if we can get back online. Why don't you take this time to go over the documents I put together?
Amia. Amia? M Miss Lynn? Sayla, did the machine get sand in it? Miss Lynn? Can you hear us? Yes, now I can. Looks like the signal's stable. Human just suffered a catastrophe. The originium dust concentration around the city is too high. We're having issues with signal stability. Sorry to keep you waiting, Amia. Huh? Hang on. You got swept up in a catastrophe? Are you all right? What about Chen and Waifu? How serious is the damage? Rhodes Island will send a rescue team right away. Hold it. Slow down. The situation in Yumen is under control. Things are slowly being repaired. It'll take roughly two months to get everything back to normal. The citizens are safe, and so is Waifu. <laughs> As for the Fun Cheonglong, she's hardy, got a thick skull on her. Don't worry. Me, I'm fine. Only problem is my hair is full of sen. Phew. Oh, you really gave me a fright, Miss Lin. But Amia, one thing. We weren't swept up. We took a catastrophe head on and survived. I recorded all the data I could. Take a look. Oh? You took a direct hit of an originium storm on this level? Most nomadic cities would have been torn apart by that. <laughs> Don't underestimate, you men. Your run of the mill interior nomadic cities couldn't hold a candle to it. Yumen has stood for centuries as a military fortress. Yan's border bulwark, protecting her northern deserts. Forget catastrophes. Sandstorms, the eastern winds, raiders. None of Desert's many threats have been able to shake the city's foundations. Incredible. I should have expected no less from Yanni's engineering. Naturally. Yumen does have some unique catastrophe-related defenses, though. They call them the Wind Aegis. Designed by the Tumu Tianxi, Yan's heavenly masters of earth and wood, the four guardians of Yumen consist of four retractable external mobile barriers. The saying goes, the three winds shall not pass as long as the four guardians stand. Wonderful. Huh? How come I only see two in the files you sent me just now? Oh. The other two suffered too much damage in the catastrophe. They've been decommissioned. <laughs> well, even so, it's amazing it could withstand a storm at this level. Could you tell us what else humans' catastrophe defenses can do? Hmm. Might be a little difficult to explain. Why don't I show you a video recording so you can see for yourself? Is this an originium projection? That's right. Take a look. As I said, the North sees plenty of man-made disasters, on top of the catastrophes. The warriors of Yumen are often fighting enemies that lurk in the shadows. At times like these, the catastrophe defenses also help fend off attackers. When deployed upon the catastrophe defenses, operators have the high ground and can deal more damage to the enemies below them. Likewise, it's not so easy for the enemy to attack operators holding such a high position. And they deal much lower damage, too. Huh? Looks like they broke through the sentries on the ground, and they're carrying something with them. Is that... a ladder? Right. The defenses aren't insurmountable. The enemy will try to climb up with those ladders. They'll attack our positions directly and curb the damage output of our high ground operators. Some special enemies will even place originium devices on the platforms, giving their friends all kinds of advantages once they've climbed up. This is starting to worry me. Oh, what's that big thing rumbling over? Oh, it's opening fire! That's the other threat we face. They used to be important Yanni's assets, but the bandits got hold of them. Once they realize taking the high ground is a difficult prospect, they will start bombarding them with suppressive fire. These people... They can't be your average bandits and thieves, can they? 
<laughs> you noticed, did you? No wonder I hear so much praise for Rhodes Island's young leader. The Pok Gai Long's wrong about pretty much everything, but not about you. <laughs> if my hunch is correct, they must be the ones who forced Yumin into a catastrophe head on. Clever girl. They call themselves the Shanghai Zhong. What does that mean? It comes out of their motto, which in Yanese means, the mounts seas, and all in between shall be our masters. They're a bunch of nut jobs who revere and serve the Farren Mutts. The Farren Mutts? You mean the Sui? Shh. If you know what that is, just keep it to yourself. Hmm. It's a little difficult for me to picture anyone worshipping Neon, though. Ling is a different story, but even then... Really? You mean the one who got herself drunk on top of the city tower, before drifting off to the land of Nod? <laughs> Why don't you introduce us to the enemies you've been facing this time? That way our operators will know what they'll be up against when they get to Yumin. I'll enlarge the video for you then. Makes it easier to explain. The Shanghai Zhong are a tricky bunch. They seem to have a complete ciphertext system. Clearly, they've received professional cryptography training. The ones setting up the strange device there are Shanghai Zhong relayers. The gadgets they're holding are called Shanghai Zhong cipher machines. Unless they are stopped, they will install cipher machines above the defenses to help hasten the transmission of their combat orders. It looks like they're moving much faster. That's right. And not only will the Cypher machines increase their movement speed, they increase their attack speed as well. The Shanghai Zhong fighters have ranks as well, with the Shanghai Zhong chiefs hiding among their teams. These chiefs are even trickier to deal with than their lackeys. What's more, they get a stat boost once they go invisible, with their attacks dealing up to twice the damage. That sounds quite scary. Does Yumin have any methods of resisting them? Fortunately, the attack effect applies only to the first hit after their invisibility deactivates. That's why detection is the key to victory here. Looking at the files, aside from their large number of combatants, it appears the Shanghai Zhang have some siege equipment in their possession too. That's right. As you can see in the video, not only did these wretched Shanghai Zhong infiltrate Yumin during a time of crisis, they even nabbed the Wall Breaker and Sand Walker. Yumin sails the Sea of Sand and is a gigantic target. The Wall Breaker is a turret crafted specifically for Yumin by the Yanis Tianxis, and its destructive power against the city's fortifications is immense. The Shanghai Zhong use Wall Breakers to prioritize attacking units stationed atop Yumin catastrophe defenses. That poses a significant disadvantage to Yumin. That said, the wall breakers are enormous in their own right. So not only do they move somewhat slow, they also have lower arts resistance. In general, operators skilled at Originium Arts should make them priority targets. Hmm. Then what are the Sandwalkers? Sandwalkers are transports with extremely high defensive abilities. They can hold four non-leader, non-mechanical foot soldiers. As soon as the soldiers make it to within half a tile from the Sandwalker, they'll get on the transport. Of course, just like the Wall Breakers, the Sandwalkers have an enormous advantage on desert terrain. Oh. Then it's probably pretty difficult to stop these Sandwalkers, right? Not exactly. According to the Yanni's manufacturing records, if the Sandwalkers are frozen, stunned, silenced, or inflicted with other negative statuses. They stop loading soldiers. And so, whenever we see a soldier getting close to a Sandwalker, we just have to make sure they can't get on the transport. Setting all that aside, this is the one I'm worried about. Who is this? That's quite a sinister aura. That's Ya, whose background is a mystery. But Ya is the mastermind behind this crisis, an exceptional martial artist. The Shanghai Zhong refers to Ya as master. Ya's abilities are very unique. It seems they have to do with teleportation and summoning. I understand her talent, cut away the seasons, 
can deal 200% arts splash damage to our units. We need to be on guard whenever encountering Ya. These are some fierce enemies. They're no doubt giving Yuman quite a headache. Yuman has stood towering over the borderlands for years. It's not going to just lie down and roll over. Besides, we have a certain someone on our side. We have some files about Yuman here. Let's take a look at them together.全てが風車に埋まったその時彼らを覚えていられる人はいるかないい戦術だねあそこに火をつけちゃえばもう完璧なんだけどなあなたは2月の彼条件を提示してちょうだいないの残念ね It doesn't matter how many times I see them, human city walls never cease to amaze. You can say that again. Especially when standing directly below the walls. They're simply astounding. They must be the reason Yuman is able to protect Yan's peace as a frontier nomadic city. While we're on the topic of safety, I think I saw Fire Whistle just now. Did she finally join Rhodes Island formally? <laughs> She sure did. Oh, you haven't seen much of Fire Whistle, have you? Why don't I tell you a little more about her? Fire Whistle is the owner of a Rim Billitonian PMC. Because of the mutual needs of her company and Rhodes Island, coupled with her company's professionalism, we've cooperated with them many times before, and a lot of our operators have known her for a while. Now, she's finally signed an agreement with us and onboarded as a proper operator. Sounds like her PMC is the first we should call, if we have any business in Rimbilitin. That's right! And it's not just her team. Fire Whistle herself packs a lot of firepower. 
The moment the enemy enters her attack range, she unleashes ranged physical attacks with her cannon. And when the enemy is directly in front of her, she activates her skill and lifts her shield up to resist the enemy's attacks, while setting the area around her target on fire, dealing periodic arts damage while ensuring her ally's safety. Sounds like she's pretty good. Though if she runs a PMC, she'd better be able to hold her own. Oh, you're a harsh one, Miss Lin. I don't even know how many enemy ambushes our operators have survived thanks to her. By the way, we've got a couple of new operators that I don't know very well yet. Could you introduce them to the doctor for me? Especially the one with the black halo. All right, let me start with her then. That's Jie Yun. She's an Anasa. I understand the Anasa are a mysterious tribe that lives in the northwestern Yanese deserts. She came to Yumen to visit her Shifu's grave. That's a Yanese term for a teacher or master. Her journey had some twists and turns, but in general you can say she's a loyal and honorable girl. Could you go into more detail about what happened? It's not really my place to say. If you want to know, maybe you should ask her yourself. All right. Is there anything else you can tell me about her? Let me think. Her weapon is very unique. It's a chakram. Once she throws it out, it deals physical damage to a large group of enemies. Plus, once she activates her skill, her attack and attack speed are both increased. And when she stops attacking and throws her chakram forward, it deals splash damage to the immediate area around where it stops, damaging all surrounding enemy units and significantly lowering their movement speed. Whoa, this AoE skill sounds amazing. It'll be great for those times when we get a large swarm of enemies attacking us. Not that it could compare with my arts, though. <laughs> now that you mention it, I don't recall seeing you use your arts in battle very much. You're usually helping the lungmen infected, or making glasswork. Chen and I saw you working on your crafts at the time, and she tried to convince me your arts were just for playing with glass. Well, that's... Oh, sorry. Pardon my gaulish. I shouldn't have, given the circumstances. But the next time I run into her, I'll show her how I really play with glass. Oh, don't be mad. I'm sure she was just joking. Hmm. Never mind her. Let me talk about my arts. I can't control San as well as my father, but withstanding enemy attacks is hardly a problem. My crystal barriers deflect enemy attacks and stun them. And while my skill is activated, I get a boost in attack, and both my attack range and my barrier's shatter damage range are increased. Plus, every time I attack and defeat an enemy, my crystal barrier will shatter and immediately regenerate. Whoa, that sounds really useful. Strong damage output plus crystal barriers that keep on regenerating as the enemies are defeated. That's offense and defense all in one. <sighs> Not that amazing. I'm still no match for Chong Yue. Uh, Chong Yue? If I recall correctly, that's Nian's eldest brother? Right. And just like Nian, Ling, and Dusk, the eldest brother is also an expert in his field, Kung Fu Martial Arts. His physical techniques have reached the pinnacle of what humans can accomplish. That said, when it comes to Kung Fu, you have to see it to believe it. Let's take a look at this video of Grandmaster Cheng Yue's moves. I open my eyes for the first time amid the chaos. There I witnessed war. Countless men threw themselves into battle, one after another, as though there they can find the answers to all the world's conflicts. What are martial arts? In search of the answer, I sealed away myself in the sword and forged the body of a man. I walked into this plightful world and onto the blood-soaked battlefield. Endless death and hardship did I witness and endure. 
And I came to realize the answer I seek is not external, but within myself. It was a long, long time. I have seen everything change around me, met many friends, and bid farewell to many more. Once, I was told I should have a mortal name. You yet live in this mortal realm. Once again, I find myself standing on this battlefield, untouched by the hundred springs and autumns beyond the wall. Yet when I happen to turn around, I see the mountains and rivers of yore, same as they ever were. I've heard Neon talk about how amazing Cheng Ye is, but if a Kung Fu Grandmaster like him could come to Rhodes Island and give us some pointers, our operators would benefit tremendously. Huh? Looks like there's something in the video feed. It's blocking the screen. Huh? Nian, Dusk and Ling, what are you doing? I'm on a call with Rhodes Island. <clears throat> Sorry to cut you off. I have no idea where they got those glow sticks. Let's keep talking about Cheng Yue. I've heard a lot of Yan's Kung Fu styles were invented by the Grand Master himself. Once he activates his skill, he deals even more physical damage to the enemy. And after the fifth time, his attack range gets expanded and his attacks turn into double strikes. After that, his skill becomes auto-activated and deals damage an extra time. Oh, so that means the longer he stays on the battlefield, the better he can wield his true strength. The enemy loses so much HP from a single blow. Right. The embodiment of Kung Fu itself. Hard to believe this is only one twelfth of what it is capable of. Miss Lin? Nothing. Let's keep going. I've heard that Yuman is known all across Yan for its military tradition and that it still has an arena for sparring and dueling. That's right. There's a board of fame at the entrance of the city. Every day, a decent number of warriors enter the arena to make names for themselves. It's funny, though. As the saying goes, those skilled in letters rarely boast, but those with Kung Fu are known to talk. And yet here in Yumin, the top spot of the board of fame is reserved for Grandmaster Cheng Yue. Don't let that kill your interest in it, though. In this arena, both winners and losers are treated to their fine in-house brew, Lie Daozi. Even if you don't enjoy alcohol, there's still something for you. Right behind the arena is the swordsmith. You could bring a few bottles of newly distilled Lie Daozi there. You might just be able to exchange them for some nice trinkets. Look how Jie Yun is always hanging out at the swordsmith. It's up to Rhodes Island whether or not you can lure her into your ranks. Sounds like things are going to get busy for you, Doctor. It looks like we have a few other outstanding operators on the list of recommendations, aside from Jia Yuan, too. Grandmaster Cheng Yue and... me? Why am I on this list? Because none of us could forget your heroic performance in Dasilus. All right. Then let me draft a formal contract for our partnership. We'll start with pharmaceutical purchasing, insurance coverage for Lungmanite operators, and the specific terms and conditions of our agreement. Uh, um, Miss Lin, we'll leave the finer points of the contract negotiation to Dr. Kaltzit. Oh, and that reminds me, Miss Lin, I heard Yuman has some gifts for the doctor, too? That's Yanni's hospitality for you. Even out here in the borderlands, the Yannis welcome everyone with open arms. As long as you visit Yumin during the event period, you will be gifted a single headhunting permit. With the special headhunting permit, you'll be able to do a single tenmul for free on Yumin's limited headhunting Solitude Universal banner. And if my hunch is correct, we'll also get one free headhunting chance every day, right? That's right. 
Your first limited headhunting each day is free, and those free chances don't accumulate. So that means we get to headhunt for free up to 24 times. This is a rare opportunity. Surely no self-respecting intellectual would let this chance slip. Isn't that right, Doctor? I'm sure the Doctor will remember to make good use of this chance. And besides, Yumin will have a special sign-in event to welcome the Doctor. Oh, I wonder how it'll work this time. The sign-in event will last for 21 days. Simply accumulate 15 days and you'll get all the amazing rewards there are to offer. The rewards include, but are not limited to, module growth materials, emergency sanity concentrate, and all kinds of high-grade materials. And on your first and ninth day of cumulative sign-in, you will get the Yanni's art pieces, Plum Blossom Joy, and New Life for a Dead Tree. Both of them are chock full of Yuman's unique character. These two antiques have left quite the impression on me. A simple, elegant shelf with red plums teetering above a wine cup, staining the wine with flowery aroma, intoxicating all those around it with joy. The sword mount stands next to a withered tree branch that has new buds sprouting from it. <sighs> it's truly pleasing. Sounds like you're a big fan of these decorations. <clears throat> they have interesting designs. I can't help but appreciate their beauty. <laughs> there really aren't that many things that win so much admiration from you. I never expected to find such detailed exquisite art pieces out here in the desert borderlands. Huh? What are these? The Yannis believe that hard work is always rewarded. Here in Yumin, as long as the doctor keeps up with daily tasks, upon accumulating a certain number of days, Yumin will award this random to the doctor as a small token of appreciation. Next up is Lungman Lucky Strips. I heard Rhodes Island's done this event before, so why don't you explain it to us, Amiya? All right, another Lucky Strips event. I'm sure you know the deal, but let me go over it real quick. During the event period, the doctor can draw two strips from the Lungman Lucky Strips each day to obtain a random. The highest amount you draw gets awarded to you, Doctor. If you end up getting less than 400 Arundum that day, then you will be given an extra draw the next day. That said, you are limited to a maximum of three strips each day. It's down to the Doctor's luck how much Arundum is awarded each day. As long as it helps the Doctor with the frightful battles that will soon unfold in human. Speaking of which... The outfit you're wearing seems a little different from what you've worn before. Is that a signature Yanni's style? <laughs> it is. Let me take the chance to show you this new outfit series from Lungmin. Personally, I'm more than satisfied with the styles we have this time. Wow. Are these outfits tailored just for Ling, Cantabile, and Mulberry? They look fantastic in them. And they show off their Yanis elements so well. Ling's outfit is particularly eye-catching. But of course, they're tailored specially for the three of them. And the attention to detail in each couldn't be more impressive. The outfit that Ling is wearing here is called It Does Wash the Strings. It's a robe made from white cloth, with loose-fitting sleeves that reach to knee level. If you take a closer look, you'll even see a lucky beast weaved into the skirt. I see. She looks much more serene and tender in this. Even a little charismatic compared to the suaveness she had before. Cantabile and Mulberry's new outfits are also spectacular. They were both designed by craftsmen from Lungmen, who poured their very souls into them. Like this outfit Mulberry is wearing. The design was inspired by the waterscapes in Jiangqi. It uses a soft gauze combined with delicate cuts, giving it an elegant, exquisite look. Whoa! I was going to say it has a light, airy feel to its stylish design sensibility. It's like the crystallization of both art and practicality. Cantabile's outfit seems to be full of mystery, too. 
I'm not sure if you've noticed, but this dress has a gauze lining at the hem, which is what gives it its graceful look. And with the matching white shawl, the outfit on the whole has a sophisticated, attractive quality. Right. It's completely different from the cuteness that Mulberry has. Cantabile feels as gentle and soft as the evening breeze. The three of them standing next to each other, each of them with their own qualities, is perfectly picturesque. Can I get an outfit tailored for me by Lungmanite Craftsman too? <laughs> Just kidding. So you like the style, huh? If you're looking to form a long-term partnership with Lungmanite Tailors, I can help you sign a few at excellent rates. Always so quick to hit the ground running. <laughs> oh, and I've heard that aside from the new outfits, some of our operators' old styles will also be reintroduced very soon. That's right. We have many beautiful fashion styles coming back in stock. Oh, this was a very popular collection, wasn't it? The doctor has been dying to see it again. They are absolutely obsessed with the series. Dusk, Mr. Nothing, and Feeder's outfits took the landship by storm. I'm pretty excited. <laughs> Dusk's outfit, Everything is a Miracle, is as elegant as it is vintage, as if walking through a cloud of smoke, blotted like ink stains. It makes you wonder if you're looking at a painting or a genuine object. Mr. Nothing and Feeder's outfits also complement their unique personalities. Mr. Nothing gives us a cool and handsome and unusual, if I might say so, expression. It goes well with this outfit. <laughs> oh, and the Rhodes Island Fashion Review event is also about to start. It will feature 62 operator outfits, stocked once again and on sale at the outfit store. 62. That's a tremendous variety. Something for everyone, really. <laughs> You've got that right. The doctor will have to seize the opportunity to pick up some high fashion for us. And setting fashion aside, have you encountered any particularly interesting architecture in human? If we're looking for something special, there's a clinic that I found. Very unique. Huh? Don't I see war drums and a Moren Zhuang Kung Fu practice dummy? What kind of clinic is that? It's a human clinic, where you'll find more weaponry than medical supplies. Something you'll really only see here. But being a clinic, it does have all the necessary medical equipment. It has a furnace for decoction, racks for drying herbs, hanging lamps, tables for preparing medicines, a mortar and pestle, everything you would expect to find in a clinic. I get the impression that you've all been to this very special place. These outfits and the look of the clinic really do mesh well. Human seems like a lot of fun. <laughs> the clinic is plenty fun, but that doesn't mean you can let your guard down in human. The journey will be perilous. So I urge the doctor, don't hesitate to make use of the special wallet pack I've prepared for you. It contains resources, originium, as well as hard currency in the form of Lungmin dollars. I imagine all of that will be plenty useful. And besides, the human government is also offering various forms of support. You'll be able to choose an operator to help you by selecting the corresponding Rhodes Island headhunting pack and then use the Advanced Special Training Pack to quickly develop them into valuable battle resources. Those do seem like good choices. Speaking of quickly developing our operators, I've heard that there's an upgraded chip pack as well. It's true. Human is offering chip packs for a limited time, particularly for casters and guards. The doctor will be able to help those newly recruited operators grow faster. And while we're on the subject of chips, Closure had a little something to add. She said, Rhodes Island is offering a new permanent gift pack. Please help me promote it. After it goes on sale, you'll get to choose a class and receive its corresponding chip materials. However, with an eye to demand, we will limit sales to two per month. 
she added a little disclaimer there. Wow, she's chosen an excellent time for marketing. And on top of all that, there will also be various resource packs available, as always. Recruitment permits, Originite Prime, Lungman Dollars, or materials for Operator Advancement. You'll be free to choose the appropriate pack for your needs, Doctor. You can see what Yumin demands of you once you arrive on the scene. Of course, we'd be awfully grateful if you ended up buying all of them. <laughs> I think Miss Lin is even better at timing her promotions. Do keep an eye out, Doctor. Speaking of which, aside from the chip packs, it seems we'll have new operators available in recruitment, too. That's right! This time, we're adding Rosa, Lionheart, and Padenko. When the update happens, open recruitment slots will be forcibly refreshed, so make sure you know what you're doing, Doctor. And by the way, while Yuman may move through desert wastelands, Miss Lin has suggested that there are quite a few local specialities to enjoy. <laughs> It brings to mind a Yanis proverb. It's a land that raises its people. The locals favor an alcoholic beverage known as Lea Daozi, and particularly enjoy it when it's newly distilled using a recipe unique to human. Oh, isn't that the same beverage they offer as a reward for fighting in the arena? Yes, indeed. We'll have to enjoy a bit of human craftsmanship together. From the northern reaches of Yin, where none thrives than the hardy, the scorching sun bestowed to you men the sharpest taste of the lands. Experience a blend that ignites your spirit. Heritage's craft of gold and excellence. A timeless fusion of water and fire. An icon beyond beverages. Taste the fire. Embrace the boldness. The next time I visit Rhodes Island, I'll bring a few pots. I hear you have quite a few operators there who appreciate a fine drink. That's so kind of you, Miss Lin. Oh, but if you encounter a feline with a chainsaw who asks you for seconds, you're not to indulge her under any circumstances. Oh, say, Amiya, I almost let the entire purpose of our call here slip my mind. About how long is it going to take for the resources I requested to arrive in Yumin? To answer that, I'm going to have to go into the weeds a bit. Rhodes Island is now using an updated resource exchange system. I think you may have already noticed the gift code on your screen. After this call ends, the doctor can log onto the Rhodes Island website at arknights.global to select the gift page. Entering an account UID together with the gift code on the screen there will let you claim the resources. After entering the UID, you'll want to double-check the associated nickname and confirm it's actually you before you claim your resources, Doctor. Amia, my experience in Lungman has taught me that when we're talking about high-value materials, you'll want any transfer to be documented in writing. That's not an unfamiliar concept to us. So Closure will post exactly how this is done on Rhodes Island's official social media accounts once this call is over. The doctor can reference those. <laughs> but of course Rhodes Island's young leader has it covered. I shouldn't have worried. You're making me blush, Miss Lin. I've still got a lot to learn. Oh, another message from Closure. Please note that the gift code is only for the EN server and can't be used on any other server. It sounds like Rhodes Island has a lot of resources. I'm looking forward to seeing what life on board is like. <laughs> and we do have quite a few Lungmanite operators here as well. I think you're well acquainted with a number of them. <laughs> sure enough. 
It's a place where even the Sway go to find refuge. I hear Dusk has drawn herself a room on board. <laughs> well, they've done a lot for us. Why, look! Neon is taking pictures for the HR department. I understand they're putting together images for a promotional brochure showcasing Rhodes Island's charm. Oh? But I thought the Grand Tutor bought Nian to Yumin. How is she popping up in so many different places? Well, yes. So, before she left, she asked the doctor and I to put out a call for submissions. She wants pictures that showcase the daily lives of operators. Onboard cuisine, design, anything that really shows off the wonder of Rhodes Island. Neon is offering a mysterious reward for the photos she selects. Are you interested in participating, Miss Lin? Me? I'll pass. I'm not a fan of events where I have to show my face in public. Oh, hang on. I've just got a message on our terminal here. Let's see. That rat would never sign up for anything like that, as cold as she is. Um, I have tons of her old pictures here I can send you. Just let me know. From Passing Lungman Traveler. Did you s I'm going to s Well, you know what? I've got my own pictures. Amia, give me a moment to look for them. <laughs> Be sure to join in, Doctor! Now it's time for the annual Yuman resupply. Lungman has docked with Yuman, and the Chambers of Commerce of both cities are welcoming the Doctor by holding a joint commercial exchange market, bringing all kinds of distinctive goods with them. Oh, we're at this part now, are we? Then allow me and Amiya to introduce these products. The first one we have for you is a pair of character-themed shoulder bags, designed with elements from mine and Cheng Yue's accessories. That's right! The bags are based on the design sensibilities of our two new operators, and they come with lots of adorable accessories. Lin and I chose them ourselves. Wonderful little merchandise featuring her and Cheng Yue. You can put them anywhere you like, Doctor, whether you want to spruce up your environment or your own outfit. The Yanis Bell accoutrements are the perfect complement to the modern multifunctional bag. Add on a badge or an air freshener, and it becomes a wonderful fashion statement. The discerning Humanite doctor should absolutely have something this trendy. I can't wait to see the doctor with one. Both the bags have different styles to them, so pick the one that best suits you. I'm sure you'll find it very convenient for your travels, too. Next is a small and delicate pendant that hasn't yet been seen in stores. Indeed. We tried something a little different this time and made a mammary. The whole pendant, pattern and all, is made of embroidery. They come with the blessings of our operators. Hmm. After this call is over... I'm going to get some for my old acquaintances at Rhodes Island. These amamory make excellent keychains or accoutrements to hang on your bag. I hope your friends and the doctor will enjoy them and that they bring good luck and success. I'm sure you've noticed the incredible key visual we've had up here, right, doctor? We've used the design for a lovely game map that's as practical as it is beautiful. We've also improved our production processes to make them even better for you, Doctor. I'm sure you'll be pleased. And speaking of product design, Amia, yours truly, has prepared a special item more suited to your daily habits, Doctor. This little mouse pad. It features a cute chibi image of Miss Lin. I'm sure you'll love it. This next collection of products is also brand new to the store. In order to better protect the doctor's important documents, we've launched a new passport cover featuring chibi designs of Ea Fiala, Suzelin, and Scotty. No doubt this will add some more color to your travels. And another thing we've got, some tape with a very special design. 
You're going to enjoy it, Doctor. <laughs> Don't give me that nervous look, Doctor. It's just a joke. You sure do get jumpy when you see those words, don't you? Here's hoping that after you buy this tape, you'll never see that prompt again. Next, I'd like to introduce to you the products for our special event. Metal badges and some more of the stained glass pendants we had last year. They follow the same design philosophy as before, but with Lynn and I choosing the operators who fit the best. We did what we could to maximize the unique charm and cuteness of each one. The pendants are all partially translucent, so putting them up to the light creates a beautiful effect. They even come with a little support to help with displaying them. This is the third year we've done these metal badges. I wonder if there's a doctor out there who's collected them all. I happen to have a complete collection. You'll have to let me show you sometime, Doctor. <laughs> Finally, I have a wonderful surprise to share with you. As Rhodes Island sets sail for her three and a half year anniversary, I have a huge announcement for you here on this very call. In the near future, we'll have for you the Rhodes Island's Records of Originium Manga Collection. I'm sure you've been reading our manga online. Everyone's pitching in to help Amiya develop some merchandise related to these manga. You'll want to watch the store's social media accounts or sign up for the newsletter to stay informed. That's right. I'll get this done as soon as I possibly can so the doctor can enjoy it sooner. <laughs> That's all the products we have to show you for now. Oh, and I almost forgot. We have some coupons here for the store in celebration of our live stream call. The first deal we have for you is a special gift for those who buy from the store during this event period, a themed event bookmark. Next is a special stream discount code. Enter the code on the screen when you pay for your goods and that's a $5 coupon for you. You can also subscribe to our store and official Twitter, and you'll get even more of the latest news and discounts. Wow, there are so many wonderful products for this event. Astounding. <laughs> right? I'm really looking forward to getting our hands on these. Be sure to leave me some, if you can. I want to see them for myself once I get to Rhodes Island. Of course, we look forward to your visit. Well then, that's all we have on our agenda for the day. Hmm, I didn't even realize we'd covered so much ground already. <laughs> I always lose track of time talking to you, Miss Lin. <laughs> oh, you're teasing me, Amiya. I'm not. I'm just so delighted to chat with you. But of course, time flies when you're having fun. And it's time to say goodbye. Don't be discouraged now. There are even happier times to come. That's absolutely right. And I have to thank you for listening too, Doctor. I'm looking forward to working with you, Doctor. Phew! Then I guess that's a wrap for this meeting. Bye, everyone! Bye-bye, <laughs> La. I'm hanging up now, Amiya. Oh, before you do... I just remembered that Neon said she'd prepared a special video for all of us. Now might just be the perfect time to watch it together. Oh, really? In that case, I'll stay till the end and watch it with you.
Doctor, we've probably crossed paths a few times before. But now we finally have a chance to get to know each other. Hello, I'm Artemis Snow, the voice of Lynn. I'm delighted to have this opportunity to say hello to you and congratulate Arknights on its anniversary. Lynn first made her debut early on in the story when Rhodes Island was up against Reunion, and she has also shown up in story events since. My first impression of her was that she's one of the most dangerous people in Lungmin. But over time, I saw how she does things, how firm her convictions are, and how much she wants to protect her home. Lynn appears in this event where Vernal Winds Will Never Blow as one of its main characters, and I'm sure that all of you will come to know how unique and charming she is by the end. Speaking as your host and the voice of Lynn, I hope you all are very excited about Where Vernal Winds Will Never Blow. We have only happened upon each other by chance, but I look forward to working with you from now on. Here are the files you need, Doctor. Ah, so I'll be giving a detailed combat briefing then. We meet again, Doctors. I'm the voice of Reed, and Reed, the Flame Shadow, Martha McIntosh. Like so many others suffering across terror, Reed had an innocent childhood that gave way to fleeing for her life time after time. But even sitting in her leadership role after that, the things she was forced to do must have broken her heart. That's how the seeds of rebellion got planted in her. And that's why, though it's horrifying to most, she saw her oripathy as less tragedy and more opportunity. In the story of What the Firelight Casts, she breaks away from Dublin to head up a group of Tehran refugees on the run. And in the process, she escapes the course and the destiny that others have set for her. The old Reed was like her sister's shadow, with no thoughts for herself, but now Reed's found her own way forward. I hope you'll show your love for Reed as she grows brave and determined. And I hope you enjoy my performance as the English voice of Reed, and I wish a wonderful three and a half year anniversary to you all. I don't know if the flames that illuminate me will be the wildfire that stories tell of. But if it's for you, for your sake, then I'll burn a path clear through the night. Hello, is this the broadcast studio for the anniversary live stream? What's up, doctors? I'm Yong Ye, the voice of Chong Yue. First of all, happy anniversary, doctors. I am very happy to meet you all as Chong Yue. As one of the Sui, Chong Yue witnessed firsthand the primeval chaos and the gradual passing of time. Even so, he chose to seal his divine consciousness away and defend the borders year after year. During the events of Where Vernal Winds Will Never Blow, Chong Yue once again answers the call to defend Yumen. His actions are just like the name he got from his old friend, a towering yet stable mountain that stops the sands below and blocks the clouds above. I hope my portrayal conveys a, a real feeling of Chong Yue's unique personality. <laughs> of course, uh, be ready to put up with all of his uh, nagging. He is the eldest brother, after all. Battles we have fought. Death we have braved. Doctor, no need to say more. <laughs> 